normally do is I would try to go into print and I try to see if they have A3 or A4 in here. And like that's all they have. So they don't have A0 or anything. So I would go to the tab on the right here and I would put in my own dimensions. And you can get like the dimension of an A0 paper or A1 paper on Google and just put it in. So just for the sake of this workshop, I'm going to go with A4. And here they ask you which color mode you want. So I know that we're not going to do any panel presentations or anything soon, but for the future, make sure that you make the file CMYK because if it's RGB, like the printer prints out like um, CMYK colors and in like when you render certain um, colors and different compositions that you want will not show up if you save it as an RGB file and you print that out instead of a CMYK file. So, yeah. so basically um, summarized is like RGB is for if you're viewing things mm -hmm. um, on the computer and CMYK is for printing. So if you print something that's um, set in RGB um, and you print it out, it'll be different according to what you see on screen. But yeah. CMYK is a lot more accurate. So you don't want to have any of those um, inaccuracies when you're printing your panels out. Yeah. yeah. And okay, so this is just, um, the, so this is how your file is going to look like with the, your layers on the bottom right corner and your toolbar that's on the left. And the main toolbars, like I'm just going to run through these tools right now. And the main toolbars you'd use is mainly Magic Wand. And this is such an important tool for you, especially if you're doing collage renders and you need to select a certain um, plant or certain thing, then this will definitely help. And Photoshop like 2020 just came up with a new feature called object selection tool. So you can, instead of going around and selecting like, I don't know, the plant in the picture, you can just draw a rectangle and it will select it by itself. Like I could show you an example just now. Let me just so like for instance in this picture I want to select just the girl sitting there I go like this and the object selection tool would just select that area and you can later on edit it to as per your will so yeah and so the other tools that are very important is the eyedropper tool so when you have like panel presentations, normally what I would do is I would go to Pinterest, I'd create a board and I'd look at the sort of themes I want and I'd um, get the pictures in, save the pictures, open it in Photoshop and I'd, I'd drop the colors so that the theme stays consistent and it looks somewhat like the Pinterest picture I saw. And also the paint, the paintbrush tool, that's very important. So you can actually import paintbrushes inside photoshop like watercolor paintbrushes if you if you're really bad at hand doing it yourself you can do it on photoshop and normally the website um that i recommend is brush easy you can get most of the brushes there for free and also um if you are creating sections or elevations on you can download this brush called sana brush and it everyone uses it basically in our year and so what you do, it's on this website called Show It Better. And you can download it for free. And once you've downloaded it, yeah. yeah, so you can download it for free. Okay, whatever. But yeah, you can download it for free and an ABR file will show up. Let me just... Oh God, I can't find my file. Yeah, okay. So an ABR file like this will show up and you just double click that file. And once you double click it and you go into your brush types here, you can see that the brushes here have already uploaded and it's already inside your file and you can start to use them. Okay, yeah. And, and basically there's um, Sana um, brushes you can use as stamps on your sections. Yeah. So, um, Nali, if you could just quickly maybe draw a section and then show how the sauna brushes is in. I can't download the sauna brush right now. <laughs> oh, okay, that's all right. But yeah, um, um, I'll show you in a different example that I have later. But yeah, okay. And 
here, it, the lastly, the main tool I would use is the pen tool because when you're selecting or drawing something on Photoshop, the magic wand tool might not always help. And the, with the pen tool, you can freely go around and draw a circle or something and select the area you want. And it's ju it just gives you more range. But yeah. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to start and show you guys how to do a collage render that I did last year. So, yeah. So normally when I'm doing renders, what I start with is I get the actual, I make the 3D model in either Rhino or Revit, and I would get the line weight from Rhino and Revit, and I would put the line weight in Illustrator, and I'd edit it there, and I would open it back in Photoshop, and I would start rendering, especially because in these um, modeling softwares, most of the time when you try to get a perspective shot out, it's never really accurate. So for this final render, the beginning line work that I based it off on is here. So I got this line work from Illustrator after I edited it, uh, after I edited it from Illustrator. And then, oh, please, please label your layers. It's it will get very complicated very fast. So you need to label it from the beginning. I know it's a hassle and it's it's you can't be bothered to do it, but just do it. So I'd get the line work and normally I du duplicate it just in case something happens. And so I first started off with the cliff at the background. So with the magic wand tool, like I said before, oh, am I going too fast? Just let me know if I am. Or if or anyone has questions, I'll be answering them. Oh, okay, cool. And if you guys have used Photoshop before and this is something you already know, um, just bear with me for a second, please. <laughs> but, yeah. Okay. So I first started with the cliff at the background. So I'd select the area that I need. And what I'd do is I'd create a new layer. And the shortcut for creating a new layer is Control shift n which will be really useful in the future. But yeah, so I'd create a new layer here and I'd pick a color I want, like blue or something. Oh, wait, no, a cliff. Brown. Yeah, and I'd do Shift F5, which means fill, and I'd fill it with the foreground color here. So the foreground color is the box that's in the front and the background color is the, for the box that's in the back. But I just fill it with that. And I do Control D to deselect the area I've. And the next step that I did was the walls. So with I with these walls, like um, if I remove the line weight, you can see that they're actually textures I got off from the internet. And I made them sort of go into this perspective view towards the center. So how I did that was, um, I'm just going to show you an example. Just, okay. How I did that was I just got like a texture from the internet, like, I don't know, concrete maybe here. And I'd size it up to how the dimension that it's supposed to be. And of course, don't forget to name your layers. And so you, if you see this little icon there, that means it's a smart object. And when it's a smart object, that means you can't edit on it directly. So you always have to rasterize that layer. So what you do is you go to right, you click right click and you go rasterize layer and it'll just become a nor normal layer. And after that, in order to sort of make it go in towards the perspective view that I had there, I would transform this. So the shortcut for transforming any image is Control T and go right click and you can transform it to whatever, like whatever you want. You can warp it, you can skew it, you can scale it, anything. So what I would do is I'd go to perspective and I just drag this up there and drag this down there. So it looks like a perspective shot there already. And I drag that a little bit up there. So yeah. And after I've done that, I would hide this layer, go back to the original line weight, and I'd select the area with the magic wand tool, the area that I want. I'd select what I want. 
there because that was the wall. Oh, sorry. Oh god. Just like this. Okay. Yeah, so that's what I wanted. And I'd go back to the texture. I'd make it visible again. And I would select inverse. So select inverse is basically just thing. Um you can go to select up here and select inverse right there, or you can do the shortcut, which I or always do. So control shift I and just delete. So there you have it. That's your wall. So basically it's the same ideology for every single one of them here, every single one of the renders here. After the walls, I moved towards the upper walls there and I started making the pool here. So what I did was I just um, got a pool texture off the internet like I did with the brick and the wood and I just um, selected the area that I needed and I just control shift I and deleted the areas I didn't. And if you see that it looks like a perspective here, it's because of the shadows that I added. So the shadow here, let me show you. The shadow of the pool. So without it, it doesn't really look like a pool. But yeah. And after that, I just added the floor. And I with the floor, I also added the shadows there. So it looked more like a floor. Yeah. And I added extra features like the pillows, the steel. How did you add the shadows, Natalie? What was your technique for that? For the shadows? The shadows? Oh. Uh, am I echoing? You were a little bit. Okay, sorry. So with the shadows, what I did was I got the pen tool here. And I would, because in Revit, I didn't get the drawing for that. I would, I just assumed that the shadows would be here. And I um, just drew it out. And after I drew it out here, I did selection. And I um, painted it. So you can paint in the shadows however you want. But normally what I do is I just go to Shift F5, which is fill. So you can find that here. Image. Oh, sorry. Wait, where is it? Yeah, edit fill and you just click the foreground color here and you just fill it with the color you want and after i did that oh let me just make this black so you can see so after i did that bit i would turn down the opacity so i just drew out the shadows here i just drew out the shadows here and i drew it out here and i just edited it by my own will and I hope that makes sense, Jared. Yep. Yep. Okay. And after that, I added all the extras. So the plants, the human, everything. And how I did that was I got these pictures, like, of the plants and of this person off Pinterest, basically. And after, so I'll show you an example on how to add in a picture from Pinterest. So, for instance, I wanted to add this lady instead. I'm just going to hide this. Make sure you name your layer and you rasterize it. So, after I got this, normally what you would do is you'd use the magic wand tool to select the white bit and you delete it. And, oh, it's clear. But there's another hack for getting rid of the white sort of um, background. And that's going to the layer, doing right click going to blending options and turning down this the visibility of the white bit here. So you don't need to go through the process of actually selecting anything, but you need to be careful in case the person like here, like if you can see in the middle, it's starting to lose the watercolor effect it had. So you have to be careful to how much you're doing it. So normally I would um, just get rid of most of the white bits and if there's still like a lot of white bits left i would just get the magic wand tool and delete it myself so yeah so yeah i got this person off pinterest and like this person right now is blending really well into the environment but the person i had before really wasn't so what i did was i selected the en entire body and i went to hue and saturation 
and I just desaturated it and sort of made it blend a little bit more with the picture so that it didn't seem really out of place. But yeah. Okay. And after that, I added. Just. Okay. After that, I added the shadow here for the humans, uh, the previous previous woman here. So how I added the shadow was I just okay. Let me show you this new feature from Photoshop that selects everything without me having to do it. Yeah. So see that new feature in Photoshop. You don't have to go around and select the entire place. You can just place a rectangular sort of shape around the object you want to select, and it'll select it automatically. And what I did was I cop I created a new layer. What was that feature called again, Natalie? It it's called the object selection tool. It's yeah. with the magic wand tool. You just have to press down on it for a couple of seconds and then they'll show all the options. Yeah. And the quick selection tool was what I used previously to select her when I was doing hue saturation. Sorry, I was moving really fast. But yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I get a new layer. I'd name it shadow. And I'd go to shift F5, the fill. And I'd color it black. So it's completely black right now, but I'm not bothered because I can turn down the opacity to make the shadow look really soft. So anyways, and then I transform this, go to Control T, flip it horizontally, flip it vertically. Oh, sorry. Flip it vertically and then push it a little bit down so that the feet bit is where, um, where her feet is. And like... Before you start adding shadows and everything, make sure you decide where you're going to place your sun. And I decided I would place my sun on the top right corner. So what I did was I flipped her vertically and I did skew. And I skew away. Sorry. Oh, God. I can't see. Okay, yeah. So I just skewed her towards the right. Uh, left, yeah. Towards the left. I just moved her entire body towards the left. Trying to make it a little bit more natural. And if skewing doesn't work, you can use another tool called warp. And you can actually warp the person out like this. So, yeah. And I bring her down here. Rotate her a little bit. And normally, I'd overlay the, the shoe. And... I'd go back to the original layer of the person. I'd select her again. I'd go back to the layer of the shadow and just delete what's overlapping there. And I'd place that layer underneath the person's layer. And I'll turn down the opacity by like, four, like 14, 20%. So, yeah. So, this is what I did there. But, yeah. So, yeah. Okay. I hope that was not fast. But, yeah. Do you guys want to see another? Um, so, I'm going to show you, like, another one I did for my studio class tomorrow. And I'm also I writing notes down if we're in case anyone's just, like, not okay. keeping up. Um, okay. I'll post them at the end. Yeah, please let me know if I'm going too fast. This is very nerve-wracking. <laughs> Anyways. So um, for my studio class tomorrow, what I've done is I'm just going to show you the step-by-step -step process I did with the render. But for the studio class, it's actually elevations. So you guys can have an idea of what I did to get that elevation. So I created the Revan model. And this is the exported... Um, oops, sorry. I created the Revan model. And this is the sort of like clean up that I did of the actual section I got. Let me show you the actual section I got. So here, with the Revit project, this was the actual sections I got. And I had to um, sort of scale it back up so that it's A0. And if you can see here, the line weights for everything are so confusing. All of the buildings is laying on top of each other. And it's just, it's, it's a real hassle to try to get it perfect on Revit. So what I've done is I just went to Illustrator and I've just cleaned that up. So it looks much more neater. And from that, okay, from that I went to Sections and I did Open with Adobe Photoshop. 
And right now, for the mode of this project, because our submission is online and we're not doing any panels or anything, I'm going with RGB. But in the future, if you are going with panels, make sure you click CMYK. So yeah, and this is how it looks like. So the fact that there's no background and it's like a sort of like pixelated grayscale thing that's happening is because it's a vector file that's going into Photoshop. So there's no um, background. So what I would do is first I name this as working line work. And I duplicate it and I'd hide this. Oh, sorry. This is original. And the shortcut for duplicate is control J. Control J, yes, sorry. Yeah, so working line work. And I create a new layer just for the background. So same thing as I did before, Shift F5. Oh, it's selecting things, is it? Yeah, it is. OK, Shift F5. And then I'd make it the background color now, because the background color here is white. And I don't really want to go and change it and be hassled by it. OK, so the background's this. And you can see that it's sort of cut off there. So I want to make this file a little bit bigger. So what I do is just I go to crop and I just give it more space so that it can breathe. So yeah, and I just go and make and color the background in again. Yeah, and I'd lock the background. Otherwise, when you're editing these, you might accidentally move the background like this. So I'd lock the background. But yeah, and after that, I added, um, I'm just going to show you the file, which I have. So here, after that, I went and I added lock this layer. Sorry. After that, I went and I added this watercolor texture because I wanted it to sort of seem really aesthetic. And I was following this sort of like theme I saw on Pinterest. And I created this watercolor texture. So I'll show you here how to do that. I just, so I went on Google and I downloaded a really high resolution watercolor texture. Ooh. Yep, so here. And I added that here. And you can see the grains here are a little bit too big. So what I've done is just, I made it small and I've just like duplicated it like, and just like duplicated everything, basically. So you get the idea. And I just merged layers here so that they're one layer and just named. So yeah. After I did that and I covered the entire Photoshop file, what I did next was I wanted it to sort of have like a off-white theme. So I got an off-white color and I colored the background at the back here as off-white. And I um, put the watercolor texture on top and I decreased the opacity a little bit so it seemed like an overlay. Oh yeah, one cool thing about this is you can go here on the right and you can click on how you want the texture of the paper to go as. You can darken it, multiply it. And I originally did overlay, but it's not showing here because I think I merged it with a different layer. But yeah. So yeah, and after that, I have the line work here, and I just, I just selected like the building area here, and I um colored it in. Where is this? I cannot find it. Okay, mm site. Yeah, here. So this is the surrounding site, and what I did was I just selected this with a magic wand tool. So with the magic wand tool, I went to the original the original line work of this section. I selected this and I selected like the surrounding here. I selected that and then I created a new layer called site and I just colored that in. So that's what I did. And the other bits here was just the same idea of collaging renders. So I can show you a little bit of what I did here. Just like a quick, it's like the same ideology. You just have to keep on <laughs> repeating it. That's basically the point of a collage. Yeah. So here, I used con like I can use concrete. Like, I mean, I like I can use concrete here. 
to sort of render. Oh, and don't be afraid to use concrete as an overlay texture as well because it looks really aesthetic. But yeah. So you're using um, a variety of um, overlay textures, so not yeah. just concrete. Um, yeah. Linen um, and paper and like carpet oh, textures also yeah. work really well in the um, renders. Yeah. So you can use like, um, so for the site plan, like I think Jonathan was mentioning earlier, he was rendering his site plan. So what you can do is you can actually use linen and, so I use linen and carpet for my site plan. Just going to bring that up. Ooh, I hope I'm not jumping between two um, projects too fast. Okay, this is just like a quick example. I'll go back to this. But yeah, so what I did here was I used a linen texture for the background around the site. And for the actual building here, these bits, I used carpet. And you don't always get the color you want. You have to like sort of select, select the material, like the texture. And you have to go to hue saturation here at the bottom here, hue saturation or color balance, and you have to edit it there. And if that doesn't work, you can do what I did in this, um, in the previous project here, where I got concrete as an overlay and the background was an off-white color. And I did concrete as an overlay because I couldn't get the concrete to look off-white. I mean, I mean, I couldn't get the watercolor paper texture to look off-white. Sorry. But yeah. Okay, back to this. So yeah. Um, let me know if you guys have any questions or if you want me to show you something else. But yeah, okay. So I just selected this. Like, this is probably just my um, section cut here. Maybe. And I, yeah? Um, Celine asks, where did you get the people for the previous render, for the site plan view? Oh, for the site plan here. I literally just went on Google and I was like, um, people plan view. <laughs> And I selected, and I just um, got peeps like these or these. And what I would do is I would just like select select them. Like, I think I got this, yeah. And I just selected the uh, black bits and I made them white. And I just randomized it here. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. There's also like a ton of um, sites online where you can get a bunch of free um cad blocks so the people you can yeah. get things like trees and like bikes um pretty much everything and like cars as well for all yeah. your plans mm -hmm. to make it look more realistic yeah and like if you add shadows on your plan a hundred percent it will look realistic like hundred percent it makes such a difference like imagine this without shadows it looks so dead and to do that you can use things like drop shadow so the effects that you showed earlier yeah and what you can also do is like you can get shadows from your rhino or revit model and you can imp like you can print like you can export the export the pdf the line work for that you can bring that into photoshop and just select the shadow bits and color that in and just put it in the actual file so yeah okay yeah. Uh, we had another message. Um, yeah. In your section, how do you do the gray gradient for the background buildings? For this here? Um, or this? This one? He says yes. Okay. Was that with the brush tool? Yeah. So uh, for this one, uh, I'll show it right here with the roof. So I used this roof texture and I just selected the roof bits. Oops. Sorry, the roof bits. Oh, no. Sorry. God, this is taking longer. Okay. Sorry, these roof bits here. Okay. So I selected that. I went back to the concrete layer, did Control Shift I or select inverse, deleted everything. Yep. Control Shift I back again. And what I did was because it's further away, I went back to the working line work. I selected the bits that were further away, like here. And I went to eraser and I made it really, really big. And I just tapped once, tapped twice. You can change the opacity here as well because if it's like 100%, then it's going to go right away. Oh, sorry. Go back to the concrete layer. I totally forgot. Okay, if you, if you select 100%, it's going to go right away. See? Or, but if with the 
a lower opacity, you can just like tap like a couple times and then deselect control D. And here you can sort of see that it's becoming a gradient. And so I went back here, selected the lines of the roof. The lines of the roof here, selected these bits. And I went back to the concrete layer, made sure my um, color here is black, went to the paintbrush tool, and I got like a watercolor sort of like um, splatter. splatter. And I just like tapped, tapped, tapped a bit. And so it sort of create like a shap like a gradient there. So that's what I did here with much more time. But yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. And um, I just want to show you guys what else you can do with this sort of rendered style. Um, here. And also don't like YouTube is your best friend here. Like if you can't keep up with what I'm saying or anything, like you can always drop us a message at UNSW Architecture Society, but going on YouTube and actually learning by yourself, like that's how I figured out how to do most of this. And this is how we'll all figure out how to do this because like a rite of passage. There's a few um YouTube channels that I would really recommend. Yeah. Um wait, should I just type them down as well? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Things like show it better. Oh, um, show it OU, OU Graphics, do you watch them as well? OU Graphics is amazing. Um, and OU Graphics, they're very good in terms of teaching you styles of rendering that um, they yeah. really like in architecture yeah. school. And yeah. also, don't be scared to like go on Pinterest, find a like, style you like and just copy that like or mimic that because that's basically what I did right now. Like I saw something on Pinterest, really liked it, and I decided to basically do what they did. So this is like one of my elevations that I did. So these trees and everything, it looks very sketchy and I just got them off Google and stuff. But yeah, this is like, um, so you can see like the sort of like um, mountain sort of texture thingy that I did at the background. It was actually from this photo here, this photo here. And I just edited it at the background. And I made it sort of blend in. Like, I can show you guys how to do that right now if you're interested in that. Uh, is that a. Okay, I'm just gonna go with it. Oh, yes, and also. Um, yeah. Uh, one person wants to know how you put a tree in from Google. Oh, okay. Um, I can show. The line that. weight is so thin. Oh, the line weight of this tree, you mean? Yes, I think so. Okay, cool. I'll show that right now. Wait, um, I'll show this first and I'll show the tree. Okay. Yeah. So basically, I got this picture, made it a tad bit bigger. Okay. I'm going to show it on a clean file because this, this might be quite confusing. Okay, let me just go back to the PDF here. Yeah. So if I'm going to add it here. Okay. So I just added it at the background. And I just copied the same file again and again. And because it was like, you know, when you copy a file, it's like, it's like a different start of the mountain here. So I did control T and right click and I flipped it horizontally and I sort of like um, pushed it in a bit. So it sort of seemed like a little bit more normal, but I wasn't really bothered by it. But yeah, so I just uh, merged these layers here. And just copy pasted it again. So yeah. Okay, sorry. I'll try to work faster. So yeah. This is what I did. And I merged these layers again. I named it. Don't forget to name your layers. Okay. And what I did was I went back to the line work. And I used the pen tool here to select the bits that I didn't need the mountain to go to. So like the area where my section was. Like here. Mm, oh. Sorry if I'm taking long.
Oh, sorry. Crap. Okay, I'm just gonna. Yeah, I cannot. Be. Okay, cool. So, just these bits that I wanted. Oh no, I messed up here. Sorry, sorry. Okay. So, these bits that I don't. Like, these are the bits that I want to keep. So, I deleted the mountain from this area. So this area, okay, anyways, so make it a selection, click OK, go back to the mountain bit and just delete that. So delete that bit there. And I'm just going to make this a little bit cleaner. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, sorry, I'm going back to the pen tool. Another alternative that you guys can use to, um, and that kind of does, I think, the same thing as the pen tool, but a bit mm -hmm. quicker. So if you right-click the lasso, the one above Natalie, yeah, yeah, and you right-click it, you can also yeah, get the, straight lines as well. Yeah, the, um, the yeah, yeah, that's sometimes good to use. Or, or, yeah, the, yeah. Or, the or the polygonal one, one. So the same thing. Yeah. 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 To be honest, I don't really like this. Hey, man. Hey, man. <laughs> they are really helpful for selecting things. Thank you, Jared. And yeah, so yeah, the watercolor background. And I went to the, I turned down the opacity to 52, I think. Sorry about that. And I went to the eraser tool and I sort of started, um, I turned down the opacity first as well. And I sort of started like, um, Blending it at the background areas, the bits here. So yeah, sorry, started blending it there. This is annoying. Okay, yeah. And after I did that, oh god. Okay, cool. One second, I think my, yeah, okay, I can't select shit now. Great. Ah. Jesus, okay, cool. And after I did that, I went to the magnet, the quick um, selection tool here. And I just, let me make this a little bit bigger. And I just dragged it across the area. Yeah, so it w normally it would select the entire area. Don't know what's up now. Anyways. Um, oh, yeah, I know now. It's because I erased the area here first. But that doesn't really matter because I just really want it like a really soft tint. But if you want to change the color of this mountain directly, then do not blend it with the eraser like I just did. You first select it and... Here, I'll show you. You first select it, go to hue saturation, and go to the color scheme you sort of want if you want to make it brighter and change the theme, something like that. Then you can do that, but I just want it like a soft sort of like change. So yeah, that's what I did. And I also you can sort of like um control how thin and how I mean how bright you want your the hue saturation that you did, so you can control that here at opacity levels here. And I think I made it like 55. Yeah, so that's what I did. And basically, that was the mountain range I got. You need to play around with the editing a little bit because I clearly played around with it more and like did it like with a lot more time. And okay, the trees. So with the trees, I went to Google. I went tree architecture. <laughs> yep. And this was the file I saw. So I just saved that file and got that file. So normally you can, um, in order to bring a photo into Photoshop, you can right click and do open with Photoshop. But what I normally do, because I cannot be <laughs> bothered with that, I would just drag the photo and insert it there. And I just click yes. But because I do this, it's always a smart object. And I have to rasterize it. And name it. don't forget to name it. But yeah. 
And for the trees here, I just um like I just selected the bits I want, like like I want to use this tree for instance. Like I'd use the rectangular marquee tool like that because I think it's quite fast to select. And I'd go control C, control V. So just copy paste. And it create a new layer here. Yeah, so what I did just now was control T so that I can select the entire picture. Because I, okay, yeah, and that's what I did there. And you see it's white. The background here is white and everything. You can use the rectangular, the magic wand tool to select the white background and delete it. But the thing is when you do that, it will delete the line work as well. So what I normally do is I just go right click blending options and I turn down the white layer. And there you go. That's your tree. And if you want to add a tree that's like behind this building, just make it bigger here and just um, go to your original line work file. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And select with a rectang uh, the magic wand tool the area that you um, the area you don't want the tree to be in. But I think that takes a lot of time and effort. So what I would do is I'd go to the rectangular marquee tool and I'd just drag it across the area I don't want it in and just go delete. Control D. That means deselect. So I just select this area here and I'd go delete and control D for DC. Yeah, yeah. Mm, uh, anything uh, anything uh, uh, David asked uh, was that uh, that oh, oh. And, and my my echoing. Echo. Okay. Um, David asks, um, was that changing? Um, was that changing the blending to remove the white on the tree? Yes, it's to remove the white on the tree because, and it's like, um, so like you can see this entire file is white, and normally what you can do is you can select it and you can just, oh, sorry, don't forget to select the layer that it's actually at. And you can select it and you can delete it. But when you do that, it's not going to get all the white. And it actually deletes some of the um, line work. Line work. Of, uh, and, and, sorry, sorry. Am I echo? Am I echo? Jared, me, your mic. Um, I just wanted to quickly add something with the magic one tool. Mm -hmm. um, at the top there, there's a toolbar with extra settings. And if you untick contiguous, um basically if you keep yeah that that will change the settings so there's a, if you um have you know lots of bounding boxes etc it'll either keep it in or if you untick it then it will do everything of that same type of color so if you try it um again see what happens if you click the white it should um select everywhere instead of just in that tree or in that in that section there you go and if it's deleting some of the black you can also change to um so that will d change how much um of a color range will be accepted when it's selecting it's just another tip for when you're using that tool nice i didn't know that thanks jared <laughs> no worries but yeah but, so yeah, i've just so been doing this blending off and blending off <laughs> But yeah. But, oh, and if it's actually a background that's black as well, you can do the opposite and get rid of the black bit. But yeah. Okay. Anyways, any other questions or add-ins that you guys wanna guys wanna maybe talk, See, about, talk about? One thing, guys, is there are so many ways to do like the same thing in Photoshop because there it's so diverse. So you know, obviously, Nat um, and Ivy and I, the ways we're showing you. So make sure you all explore other ways. Yeah, definitely, like, explore and, like, test things out. And don't be afraid to, like, go on YouTube and see how everyone does it as well. So, yeah. Well, it's been about an hour. Oh, okay. Thank you, Thank you Thank Natalie. And if, and there, if there are questions, questions I can just take Do you maybe want to um just open up a few more as exemplars? Um, Jared, you cut off. What were you um, saying? Jared, you cut off. Do you maybe just want to show us a few more of your projects? 
over oh, the years, oh. just as inspiration for yeah, people to yeah. see. Sure, sure. Um, um, but, but I've lost, I've lost the files, the files. For these projects, so I apologize because because no. yeah, I deleted, yeah, I deleted all, all of them, all them accidentally, accidentally, of course. But yeah, but yeah. always have backups, people. Yes, every please, please, every please semester, backup. back up to a drive. No, no every, week, every week, every week, please. please. I'm scarred. <laughs> totally scarred. But, but I yeah. feel your yeah. pain, Natalie. <laughs> But um, these are some of the renders I did last term. So renders like this, like this. And basically how I got these renders and the soft sort of light, I wanted to make it like hyper realistic. And what I did was I in Revit V-Ray, like you can download V-Ray for free. And um, I, on Revit V-Ray, I started rendering it. Like I had to put in my own materials, my own um, like, like, uh, what was it? Yeah, like I had to figure out my own HDMI sort of like imaging so that it'll create like sort of, it'll take the light from that image so that it appears soft. Otherwise, in V-Ray, it'll just appear really, really harsh. So I got like that soft light imaging, picked all the materials and I um, sort of rendered it. And once I got like a form that looked like this, I went to um, Photoshop and I photoshopped in the sky and the birds and like the people and like in here you can see that I um, sort of photoshopped like the shadows in as well but yeah mm -hmm. yep so that's what I did for one of my previous like here as well it was the same thing as a but it wasn't a collage it was like an actual render that i got so like don't be afraid to add like a sketchup v-ray render as well because i know sketchup can do this as well it's not only revit like v-ray is very very good just make sure you like explore it because i'm not an expert on v-ray as well but as i was exploring it i started figuring out new things and new ways of doing things and Oh yeah, what, rendering the floor plans and site plans. I used to be really obsessed with doing that. So normally, what I would do is I would add like a carpet sort of like texture for the, um, the roads and everything, and concrete for the roof, and blocked in colors for other buildings around it. Like um, you can see here, like I did carpet textures and linen for the background stuff. But yeah, I think that's all I have to show. <laughs> I'll try to. Oh yeah, okay. Let me show you another one. Okay, so this was like a conceptual sort of quick, like render I did for one of our projects last year for studio. And I just I got like this sort of massing from uh, Rhino. Yeah, so I created this block in Rhino. Yeah. So I created this block in Rhino and I just, okay, let me just hide these. So this was the original line work I got from Rhino after I cleaned it up in Illustrator. And I just started adding in the glass. Oh, sorry. Woo. Okay, so at first I added in the glass here at the back here and the concrete here. And the concrete was actually just one flat layer. And I like I showed before with the roof, I would select the area that was at the back and I'd make it lighter or darker. And I just added a hue saturation so it would match the glass at the back. And I added this tree here I got from the internet. And I'm, I added, like, I just selected that and then I um, tweaked the colors a bit by using hue saturation. And I added some falling leaves, and I added this wood texture there. But yeah. And I hid the line work at the end. I'm a huge fan of hiding line work so that it looks really like, um, sort of like a vector work, like, render. So yeah. Okay, I guess that's it. Do you guys have any other questions? Or do you guys have to go...
Okay, I'm just gonna try and download, try to download this Sana thing because for some reason I can't download Sana brushes. I haven't been able to. Do okay. Okay. Yep. Okay, so the sauna brush, this is what's going to happen when you download it. You're going to get it as an ABR file. Double click on it and the Photoshop file will show here. That means it's already in your paintbrush tools here. So go to your paintbrush, go up here, hide this, hide this, and then at the bottom, the sauna style brushes are all there. So you can start by clicking one of these brushes and let me just create a new layer for that. Okay, humans. Anyways, so yeah, you can click that and different ones of them will appear. And make sure you go to your foreground color here and pick the color you want, like something like that. Pick the color you want and pick how like soft or how thick you uh, I mean how bold you want it to be. I'd probably go 50 and like this or something and just start rendering. And it's basically just like you just need to tap it once and you get the person. That's it. Yep. I hope that was. Um... Oh, um, one more thing. Yeah. Um, you can do the same thing with like clouds. You can download clouds. I always okay. download like vegetation and grass, mm. and that's how I render in my um, plants and stuff. Yeah, you can so do it's that. Not just not just limited to just silhouettes. Yeah. Yeah. And. Oh yeah, and oh, oh yeah, yeah, you can do that. Sorry. <laughs> okay, is there anything else you guys want me to show? Sorry if it was really like uh, confusing and rushed. Like, I don't know. <laughs> it's very hard to explain how, so, like, how to render and how to Photoshop things unless you start to do it yourself. But yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, any other things do you, you guys want me to explain? Like, if you guys have any questions about this at all, or, like, keep coming to our, like, um, workshops, and you can, like, um, ask us in the workshops, or, like, if your friends or anything, like, you guys are struggling with something, you can, like, definitely just, like, next time, like, next week on Monday, if we have, like, we're going to have our InDesign workshops. And if you had like a Photoshop related question or something like that, feel free to drop anything like on the, what's it called? We're usually on like before the um, workshop starts. So yeah, yeah. if you need some help and want to ask questions, we're there. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. Thank you guys. Stay safe. Don't get sick. <laughs> <laughs>